Hey guys, how's it going? Hope everybody's doing well out there today. In a previous video, we looked at a way to restart Docker containers uh, if they go into an unhealthy status using something called Docker Auto Heal. In this video, I wanna show a different way to do basically the same thing using a different container called dunhealth. But before we get into all of that, a quick message from today's video sponsor. Yourcdkey.com is a great place to get Windows 10 keys at incredibly low prices. So here we are on the Microsoft Windows 10 Pro page, and right here you can see the current price is $20.05. But if you use the coupon code that's in the description down below, you'll get it even cheaper. So I'm gonna go ahead and paste that in here and click apply. And now our new total for Windows 10 Pro is about 15 bucks. Now I have the option to go ahead and view the keys right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. Then I'll click on get the key. And then I'm gonna come over here and right there you can change the product key. So go ahead and click on that. I'm gonna go ahead and change the product key right here. So I've entered my key and I'll click next. Then I'll click on activate. And here we can see that Windows is activated. Next, what we wanna do is go ahead and validate the key installation. And right there you can see the Windows 10 Professional Edition is permanently activated. So head on over to yourcdkey.com to get your next Windows 10 Pro key at ridiculously low prices. So this D unhealth container is written by the same guy who did gluten. Now gluten was a VPN container uh, that you could just set up and then have other containers run all of their traffic through it. Uh, again, this D unhealth was written by the same guy. Now you may wonder uh, why why would I want to show this? Well, there's 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 a couple of reasons really. One, uh, we're doing self hosting and it's always nice to have options. Uh, so you don't have to be tied into one ecosystem or another. If you wanted to, you could, well, hopefully have options. And that's what I want to show in this video. But uh, let's get into some more detail about why uh, this may be a preferred method uh, by taking a look at the GitHub page here. So uh, if we take a look over here, this is the GitHub page. And of course, this will all be linked in the description down below. Uh, if we scroll down a little bit here, <clears throat> uh, it says that it will restart unhealthy containers marked with uh, this label. Uh, we'll, we'll get into labels here in a little bit, uh, but it does require you to add a label to your different containers. So that's something that you may want to consider uh, as far as part of your build here. So the next point here that we want to take a look at is it receives Docker events as a stream instead of pulling periodically. Now, what does that mean? Well, let's jump over here to a, a Reddit post uh, where he talked about this, where he says, auto heal pulls Docker periodically using a shell script and curl. Uh, their image is also based on Alpine, which is secure, but it's not as secure as the way it's been done with uh, Dion Health, because what's cool about Dion Health is that um, it uses the native Docker APIs, so it doesn't actually need shell, it doesn't need network, it doesn't really need an OS, because everything's done uh, using the, the native Docker API. And if we come over um, <clears throat> over to here and we take a look. Uh, on docker or hub.docker.com, we can see the last push was 19 hours ago. Uh, that was actually the result of me having a conversation uh, with Quentin, the developer of uh, this application, as well as Gluten. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, the what you'll notice here is the image size for this container is only three and a quarter megabytes. So it is a very, very small, unobtrusive uh, container that just runs in the background that's super simple to set up. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at how to do that just here real quick. So we'll come back over to here to the uh, GitHub page and you've got a couple of ways you could do this. You could uh, clone the repository and then execute it uh, via a command line or uh, you can come over here to this docker compose.yml file right here, uh, copy this. Uh, right click, click copy, <clears throat> come over here to your portainer and paste this in. Now there is uh, one thing that I do wanna make note of here. I'm gonna drop these uh, in here next to each other. Darn it, not that, there we go. So <clears throat> if you clone the repository, uh, you can, oops, come on, work with me here, there we go. Okay, so if you clone the repository, uh, you can leave this alone and just run this Docker Compose as it is in a command line. However, if you just wanna use the Docker Compose file, you will want to remove this build uh, line right here on line four. You can see that uh, my line four is actually uh, this one's line five. So I've just taken out that build line because I'm just using uh, the, the docker compose.yml as a stack um, rather than cloning the repository. So that's the only change that I've made to this. 
Um, and then once you've got all of this set up, um, like you'll see here, uh, there is no network mode. It doesn't need a network mode. It doesn't need to connect to the internet because it's using that Docker API. Uh, log level info, server address, all of this, you can basically leave alone. Uh, change your time zone uh, to be uh, your time zone. Uh, other than that, uh, you can leave this exactly as it sits right here. And uh, I'm gonna click on update the stack. Uh, you can, you'll of course click on uh, deploy the stack, but let's just go ahead and do that real quickly here. We'll give this a second, even if it's got to download uh, the, the image, it's three megs, three and a quarter megs. So it's gonna happen hopefully very, very quickly. Here we can see that it's starting. So if we come back over to here, uh, it says it's monitoring one container to restart when becoming unhealthy. So if we come back over to our containers, uh, here we can see uh, that I've got D, uh, D on health. Uh, I've got this Hugin and I've got a Postgres uh, database. <clears throat> if I come into here and I go into duplicate and edit and then come down to labels, uh, here you can see, um, hopefully, let's, let's do this, let's scroll down. Here we go. So I've added this label. Um, and if, if you didn't, let me just do this, let me delete that. So when you come in here, it's gonna look like this, right? So you're just gonna click on add a label. You're just gonna paste that in there, this dnhealth.restart.on.unhealthy and hit true. Oops, if I could spell, that would work better. So uh, that's all you've gotta do. Once you've got that, that label in there, click on deploy the container, click replace. And now that container will be monitored uh, for any time it goes healthy. Now, because we're using DN Health and it's using the native Docker API, it should um, actually restart much, much faster than it would if you were using uh, a polling system uh, like our other Docker container did from the previous video. So this is very, very straightforward, very easy to set up, very easy to implement, very, very little as far as system resources are concerned. In fact, if I come over to here and I take a look at system resources, uh, I'll just change this. <clears throat> To, uh, to update every one second, uh, and we'll go ahead and bring this up. Uh, it's using uh, 7.3 megs of uh, system RAM. Uh, it's using uh, a little bit of uh, CPU there uh, just every once in a while. It's not using any IO, it's not using any network. Like it says here, network stats are unavailable for this container because it's not using network. Uh, and now that it's deployed, it's good to go. It's barely using uh, point 1% of your CPU usage to run its tasks in the background. So uh, I did have a chance, like I said, to talk to Quentin, the developer of this and gluten. And he said, if you've got any issues or anything, uh, head over to GitHub. Again, that will be linked in the description. Open up a, a, a an issue and hopefully you can get that resolved very quickly. He's also working on some very cool stuff that will hopefully fix some other issues uh, with restarting containers uh, so that it will cascade the restarts uh, so that, uh, let's say you're using a VPN, uh, you you shouldn't in theory have to go through the process of reassigning the VPN container in when, when that kind of stuff happens. So that's something that's coming down the pipe. Uh, so definitely keep an eye on DN Health. I think it's a very cool product uh, and hopefully you guys will enjoy it as much as I'm sure I will. Uh, if you've got any questions uh, that I can help with, maybe leave those in the comment section down below. If you wanna support the channel, you can become a channel member by clicking the join right under this video or by clicking the link in the description uh, where you can support the channel any number of ways, whether it's through PayPal, PayPal, Patreon, whatever. Uh, all of those links will be down below this video. Uh, and I do want to give a big shout out to my patrons, my channel members. Thank you. You guys rock. Uh, thanks for your support. Really do appreciate it. But with all that said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. As always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support. And I'll talk to you in the next video.